Have you ever wondered if you can freeze dry seeds and still grow a successful garden? Today we're gonna to put it to the test. But before we jump in and start freeze drying all of these seeds, I think we need to answer a question. Why would you even want to freeze dry seeds and what are the benefits if you do freeze dry seeds? The quick answer is you can extend seed longevity. You can also preserve heirloom seeds or rare seeds. This can also be a great opportunity for seed banks for preppers, and also for disaster preparedness. Freeze drying seeds is not going to allow germination or bacteria buildup during storage, but more on that later. To make this as scientific as we can today, we're gonna to use four different kinds of seeds. Freeze dried versus non-freeze dried. We're gonna freeze dry four different kinds of seeds, then we're going to use four different kinds of seeds from the exact same bag. We're going to try and germinate them all at the same time under identical circumstances in identical growing platforms, identical soil, identical lighting conditions, and identical water. We're also gonna use the same amount of seeds in both. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is open up these seeds and talk about the seeds a little bit. And we are using seeds from True Leaf Market today. These are gonna be microgreen seeds. I chose to use microgreen seeds because they're gonna germinate very fast and they're also gonna be highly concentrated while we're growing. So you can definitely get a better look at what the results are gonna be because they will be so highly concentrated. There will be lots of sprouts. That'll make it very obvious whether freeze drying has a big effect on the germination of the seeds. And the seeds we're gonna to do today are black oil, sunflower. We're going to do broccoli sprouts, red acre cabbage, and speckled peas. We're gonna do eight ounces of peas and then eight ounces of non-freeze dried peas. And then the rest of these we're gonna put back in the bag for our experiment B, which will be non-freeze drying. The red cabbage we're gonna do an ounce and a half, and that's weight, not volume. We'll also do an ounce and a half of the broccoli seeds. We're gonna do six ounces of sunflower. These are ready to go into the freeze dryer. While we're waiting for the freeze dryer to cool down, I wanna talk about uh, removing the oxygen from the seeds and the viability of actually having them germinate after prolonged periods of not having oxygen. So these seeds can survive without oxygen for shorter periods of time. Over longer periods of time, they are not going to be as viable as they once were. So if you're planning on going into Mylar bags, with oxygen absorbers, the chances of your seeds surviving long-term are a lot smaller than if you let them breathe every once in a while. Even if you store them in a, a mason jar or something, you really want to have them uh, have oxygen. The biggest thing that you want to avoid, obviously, is water, which is one of the reasons why freeze drying is so great because it's removing all of the water. Your ideal conditions for seed storage are gonna be less than 5% of moisture content. Your ideal temperature should be in between 32 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And certain seeds are gonna tolerate freeze drying better than others. The type of, the garden variety type of seeds are gonna typically do pretty well. Uh, things like citrus seeds and tree seeds like acorns, their germination rate will typically be much lower and the seeds will potentially die. Now let's go add these to the freeze dryer. These seeds only took about 12 hours, about 12 and a half hours. Appearance wise, they look very similar. All of them are just a little bit more shriveled than they were before, as you can imagine, since we are take, we took all of the water out of them. The next thing we need to do is soak these seeds. Uh, two of these four varieties need to be soaked. The sunflowers need to be soaked for eight to 12 hours, uh, as well as the peas. The cabbage and the broccoli actually will germinate super quick and they do not need to be soaked. I'm not sure, I've never freeze dried these varieties before, so just because the broccoli and the cabbage don't normally need to be soaked, they may benefit from just like a quick soak since we removed 100% of the water away from them. I'm also very curious to see what these weigh after freeze drying. I wouldn't imagine it would make a huge difference, but the sunflowers now weigh 5.7 and the peas now weigh 7.4, so not a huge difference but about half an ounce maybe of water was removed. Now we have equal weights of seeds. I have marked the freeze dried versus non for the peas and for the black sunflower. And now we have both freeze dried and non soaking in water, identical containers for both of these, also identical water used. There's something kind of interesting on the black sunflower. You can see the water is a lot darker. 
Maybe that has something to do with uh, the amount of moisture that was removed, but I'm just gonna, hook, I'm gonna take a fork and just make sure all of these seeds are soaked. These are gonna have to soak for a while. Here is the broccoli. And the broccoli stayed the same weight and looks like the cabbage did too. So we've done the same with the cabbage and the broccoli. These are ready to actually be planted. So we're gonna do that next. Let's get these planted. We're gonna start with two cups of water in the bottom of these trays. I prefer compost soil almost all the way to the top of a 10 by 20 tray. I'm doing two versions of each of these seeds, freeze dried and non freeze dried. And for microgreens, these are gonna be highly concentrated. It's going to look like there are too many seeds. You wanna spread them evenly throughout. And then we're gonna do the identical situation for the sunflowers and for the peas. They're also gonna be very highly concentrated through the soil. And then for microgreens, you don't actually want to cover the seeds with soil like you normally would. We're just gonna lightly spritz them and the seeds are just gonna lay on top of the surface and then lay another tray on top with some weight to mimic being under the soil. You also wanna leave these in the dark for several days until they sprout. All right, here we are on day Four, a couple interesting things happening. You can see on a couple of these, they're starting to push up because the sprouts are pushing the weight even of this box plus weight on top of it up. Those are really coming up. Here is the freeze dried. Here is the non freeze dried, very similar. There's actually a few more sprouts on the freeze dried. That may change here in a little bit. And here is the cabbage. Very similar. Here are the sunflowers, the non and the freeze dried, also extremely similar so far. And last are the pea shoots. On the pea shoots, the non is actually doing a little better than the freeze dried version so far. There's a little bit higher growth, a little bit more dense growth on the non than the freeze dried. So we'll just kind of carry on business as usual here. Here we are day six and there's really a lot to see today. Everything has sprouted. Interesting results so far. The freeze dried broccoli is actually a little bushier than the non. So cabbage non freeze dried is just about the same as the freeze dried. Pea shoots, the non has a little bit higher growth than the freeze dried. About equal germination between the two. And same with the sunflower, equal germination I would say. Day seven, lots to see today. I took the covers off of these bottom ones. Top ones, I wanna show you what's happening. You can see that the pea sprouts are already pushing up that cover and you can see that they're really taking off now. There is a difference between the non and the freeze dried now. There's the non, they're a little bit taller than the freeze dried. Sunflower's not quite ready for full light yet. Just about the same results, I would say. The cabbage has just gone gangbusters in the last couple days. Broccoli, the same thing. They just really took off in the last couple days. We'll check in again on day nine. I think we'll see some more dramatic results. Day nine, you can really start to see these things are starting to fill out. Cabbage, non and freeze dried, very, very similar, as well as the broccoli. They're just about neck and neck, I would say. I don't think you can really tell the difference. Peas are really starting to even up. The freeze dried ones are still a little bit shorter than the, uh, the non freeze dried. Our sunflowers, I still have them under a cover because they're not totally sprouted yet. Uh, I'll probably remove that cover in the next day or so. About the same results. I think I'll do one final check-in on maybe day 12 or 14 or whatever, right when these are ready to harvest. We made it to day 14. These germinated 14 days ago. They started to sprout when we planted both of them. Some freeze dried, some not freeze dried. Ideal conditions for both of these and exactly the same conditions for both of them. Same growing platform, same soil, uh, same amount of soil, same amount of water, same type of water, same amount of uh, full spectrum light uh, throughout the day. And I want you to take a minute and just look at these and see if you can tell the difference between the ones that were freeze dried and the ones that were not freeze dried. Now I'm going to tell you which one is freeze dried, which is not. We'll start with the cabbage right here. This is non freeze dried. This is freeze dried. They are literally identical in, in my eyes. And with this amount of density on the growing, you would definitely be able to tell a discrepancy uh, either way. Those are completely identical. Over here, we have sunflowers. These are the freeze dried. These are the non freeze dried. Uh, there's little spurts of bigger growth you can see, but I wouldn't call it better uh, one way or the other, non or freeze dried. 
Over here we have our broccoli. The broccoli, uh, this is freeze dried. This is non freeze dried. Very, very close. There's a little bit larger leaf growth maybe on the broccoli uh, on the non freeze dried, maybe just a little bit. And I saved the best or the most interesting at least for last. These are our pea sprouts. So these are the pea sprouts that were not freeze dried. These were the freeze dried pea sprouts. The non freeze dried is a little bit bigger growth, I would say. Uh, it's just maybe just a little bit more spread out than the non is. The non is just a little bit, it's almost like it's about a day behind in growth. Uh, the pea sprouts actually grow really fast once they get going. So remember that the sunflowers and also the peas were the ones that soaked for about eight to 10 hours before we planted them. Uh, one thing to note with that, since we were talking about the peas, maybe that makes the difference between the, uh, the one day's growth. You can see that the peas have a couple of things off here on the side that are just not quite as developed as the non-freeze dried. The sunflowers, I don't really think it made a difference. Uh, there's just little growth spurts here and there. These also are not completely ready to harvest. They're probably still a couple of days away, I would say. A few things to consider with this video. First thing is that we freeze dried then planted directly after freeze drying. Typically that's not gonna be the scenario that you use. You would freeze dry in order to be able to store them for a very long term. It would be very interesting to see what happens over the long term, the course of several years or 10 years or even 15 years, if someone planted and did the same exact experiment. The problem with that is that if you used identical seeds, one freeze dried and not, the uh, both would still be very old seeds. So that might be a huge factor. This is one of those videos that I really rely on the comments for feedback and also for extra information for people that are viewing this video. If you have experienced freeze drying seeds or even similar things like this, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. It really educates the freeze drying community and educates people that are interested in this type of material. I tried to put this video out before harvest time for the gardening season because I figured this would give you plenty of time to decide whether it's a viable option for you. And I hope that you are able to use this in the future, at least save back maybe some extra freeze dried seeds just for uh, who knows. If you wanna find out more about microgreens and freeze drying microgreens, make sure you check out our freeze dried microgreens video. That will show you lots of uses for these freeze dried microgreens, how to get the best results when freeze drying, and also how to harvest them. Hey, you. Are you unlocking your full potential as a freeze dryer? If you're not signed up for the freeze drying community email list, you're missing out on pro freeze drying tips and freeze dryer giveaways, the latest sales, inspirational people in the freeze drying community, as well as invaluable food storage recipes. And most important, unlocking your inner freeze drying guru. Click the first link in the description to get signed up.